Наш следующий доклад, автор Энг Сви, автор книги, которую он писал в соавторстве с Вадимом Климовым про игру и скрипты. Доклад и рассказ Энг Сви будет про CICD, то есть это средство разработки, тул для разработки под CPI, который называется у него Flash Pipe. Энг Сви, can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes. Hi. Uh, Hi. I can hear you. Uh, thank you very much for having me uh, for PIMON this year. Uh, uh, please uh, start in your uh, speech. All right. Great. Um, let me share my screen. Hi, my name is Ing Sui. Um, I'll be presenting today on FlashPipe. Uh, simplifying CI/CD for SAP integration suite. As I mentioned, uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege to present again this year at PI Mon, and I hope this uh, presentation will be beneficial for all the attendees today. So uh, the agenda for today, uh, just uh, uh, just to start off, I'll talk about a little bit about myself, uh, and then. We'll look at what is continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. Then I'll introduce you to FlashPipe, which is the open source solution for that. Um, then we'll spend some time showing you how uh, FlashPipe is used in action uh, for SAP integration suite, in particular the cloud integration section. And uh, at the end, there'll be time for question and answers if there are any. So a short uh, introduction about myself. So um, my name is Eng Sui Yo. I'm uh, from Malaysia, but currently based in Poznan, Poland. Uh, I'm an integration architect at INT4. So I've been working with SAP Solutions since 2005. And from 2015, I started working with SAP Integration Suit back when it was uh, it started uh, being called uh, HANA Cloud Integration, HCI. So I'm also an author of multiple open source solutions uh, in the area of SAP integration. So FlashPipe is the current one that I'm working on, but previously I've did, done some, uh, some adapter modules for, for PI, and then also then it was ported into CPI as a, as a Swiss Army knife for, for conversion between different uh, types of format. So I'm an SAP mentor um, since uh, five years ago, I think. And uh, occasionally I speak at TechEd. And in the last year, we, together with uh, uh, Vadim Klimov, which most of you know, uh, we wrote an e-byte, uh, an SAP press e-byte uh, around developing Groovy scripts for SAP Cloud Platform Integration. So here's a talk to ponder. There's a claim that Amazon deploys code to production every 11.7 seconds. That's really amazing, uh, amazing feature, amazing um, capability that is available at Amazon. So their changes are so frequent that they are able to deploy it uh, to production so frequently. But how do we actually do that? How does, how is it possible to do something like that? So this is where um, today we'll start off at looking into what we call continuous integration and continuous delivery deployment. So as I said, how, how do you do it? The, um, the ability for rapid deployment to production is backed by automation because if you're going to do it um, manually um, no one none of us can do it in this 11.7 seconds we need to back it with automation so the trend in software development um, in the recent years and all is continuous integration uh, ci and continuous delivery or continuous deployment so continuous integration is integration of your uh, source code um, development objects into a central repository and then um, continuous delivery and continuous deployment uh, is the, the capability of testing that change, that source code change, and then 
uh, deploying it into the production environment. The difference between delivery and deployment is the last part where it is actually deployed to production. For delivery, the continuous delivery, there might still be a manual approval before moving it into, into production. But uh, continuous deployment is uh, what I would call the holy grail because even the there's no approval, even the deployment into production is, is automated. So this from the de developer point of, de from the start of the development process, when the developer commit the changes, it goes through everything, it build, automated build, automated testing, and finally deployment to production. So these days, CI CD capability is a must have for IT organizations across all industries. Is everyone's talking about it, uh, agile development and DevOps require this type of capability. So here's another point to ponder. How long does it take for deployment of an average SAP-based development? Uh, most of you today are uh, probably seasoned SAP uh, professionals. You, you might, you should be able to answer this yourself from experience. Is it one week, one month, sometimes even six weeks? You, you know for yourself how typically long and manual the process is. So, so um, the next slide we then look at in terms of cloud integration as part of the integration suite, we will look at the build to deploy process. And as we say, um, typically the build to deploy process of software development in SAP ecosystem, it consists of many manual and time consuming steps. So for cloud integration, it is no real difference. As you can see the three different phases. Yes. Okay. Um, the Thanks. three. <laughs> um, okay, can you mute yourself please? Um, so the three different phases we have um, for build, we start off by developing an integration flow in the browser in web UI. Конечно, видно. And then we uh, might develop uh, Таня, Groovy scripts. Нет, я, я постараюсь сидеть вот так. Ну ты, а ты не можешь просто Танеш, uh, покинуть помещение и все. I, um, в четыре часа. Илья, you able Коллеги, заметьтесь, пожалуйста, вы мешаете докладчику. Hey, can I continue? Yes, please go on. Sorry okay. for that. No problem. Um, so uh, after, when you start developing your integration flow, that at some point you might need some groovy scripts in it. And you have an option to use the web UI for it, but you you can also develop this externally. Like for myself or Vadim, we, we use an external ID. We, we quite like uh, IntelliJ idea. So we develop it uh, externally. So, so this part of our build. And uh, then at the point where we are ready to then deploy and test it, there's a manual action to click the deployment in the UI so that the design artifact is uh, built and compiled and then deployed to the runtime. So there's a manual effort there. Then <clears throat> at, during the test phase, we use uh, tools, whether Postman or um, SOAP UI, uh, and or we test with external third-party systems uh, is unfortunately is still quite a manual process. Uh, some some organizations do use uh, some manual, some automated tools. Like for example, uh, at our company INT INT four, we have the two IFTT that helps with automating testing. So that that there is that possibility, but a lot of companies still do manual testing at this stage. Then when we've finished testing and we're ready to deploy, we need to manually export the design artifact from the development system, whether you use a transport system uh, or you just do a manual file in, in file, file out, file in, there's still manual action in MOF. Then you import the design artifact into the production system. You do manual configuration 
and lastly you click the deploy to runtime uh, as you can see there are so many manual steps involved in this process from build to deploy so this is where flash wipe comes into the picture and we have a short introduction of Flashpipe. So uh, some of the key features of Flashpipe is uh, our automated syncing of integration flows to a Git repository. You can do automated unit testing or simulation testing with Maven. You can do automated deployment of integration flows to the runtime and you can then automate the deployment to different environments, be it QA or production environments. As you can see, um, this uh, open source solution flash pipe, it enables automation across different teams and personas, the developer in the development team, the testers in the testing QA team, and also those who are involved in the change and release process. As I mentioned, a flash part is an open source solution. You can see the link to it there later during the demo time. I'll just quickly show you, um, show you the GitHub repository for it. And it is licensed under Apache license version 2.0. So a brief um, show of what is what are the technologies behind flash part. Firstly, is Git, so where we need to store all our uh, design artifacts. Then you have Groovy, uh, where, where that is the core programming logic that I use. I mean, it's possible to do it in any programming language, but uh, I really enjoy doing it in Groovy, so that's where most of the logic are based on. Um, around that, I have uh, uh, some Unix script in the bash shell. So that enables it to be provided as a command line, uh, command line uh, tool that then can be used in a pipeline. And finally, all of this is packed into a Docker image, which is publicly available, which you can pull yourself or you can pull via a CI CD pipeline. So a little bit more about Flashpipe. As I mentioned, it is a public, public Docker image that provides the CI CD capabilities for SAP integration suite. It is technically possible to use Flashpipe on any CI CD tool that supports container-based pipeline execution. In our demo later, I'll show you how it's used on two platforms, but it is possible. So there are so many platforms these days. So from really traditional Jenkins to the more cloud-based ones like uh, Azure DevOps, Azure Pipelines, um, GitHub Actions. Uh, then you have, of course, uh, Bitbucket, GitLab, and uh, all, all these different flavors. So as long as it, is, uh, it supports container-based execution, uh, technically, it should be possible. So as I mentioned, uh, since it's a Docker image, uh, if you're going to use it, uh, just be aware that it comes in two flavors, uh, i.e. tags, and you can actually mix and match this in different steps of the pipeline. So the flavors that you have are um, separated into full and light, so the difference is the light with a dash LIT at the end. So the full image um, has Maven capabilities in it and also preloaded with uh, third party libraries. So it will be uh, faster if you run Maven testing. So some of the libraries are preloaded and not, um, you don't need to wait for it to download from Maven Central. If you use the look at the light, the the main difference is actually it doesn't have Maven, uh, and the idea is if uh, without this the image is smaller and it, it it will be faster to pull it from Docker Hub. 
So further on flashback, so as I mentioned earlier, um, some of the key technologies and how at the end it uh, sums up to these few key components. The first uh, Java executable, so the groovy codes where most of the logic is done, uh, then compiles Java binaries, and then these are used to access the SAP integration suites APIs. Um, then you have this unit script that wraps around the Java executables that then provides you executable steps that can be used in a pipeline definition uh, for CI, your CI CD environment. And I also mentioned earlier again, um, there's a local Maven repository for full images. So if you run Maven based testing, this uh, is a lot faster. You don't need to download all the Maven, uh, all the third party dependencies from Maven Central. So great, um, that's uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, uh, what Flashpad is about. I think it's more meaningful than that we look at how it is done. Uh, so we have this part where I'll show you the demo of Flashpad in action. The, there are four different parts that I'll cover. So the first part is creating an integration flow on a CPI tenant. I'll just start off with a dummy Groovy script. And then the next step, I will use Flashback to sync it to a Git repository. For this step, I'm going to show how it's done on GitHub Actions. So one of the CI CD platforms that we will see today. Then once it's synced to a Git repository, I can clone the repository and then uh, use it locally um, on my on my um, I, local IDE, IntelliJ IDEA, where I'll start developing the scripts. And then once I'm ready, I'm happy with the scripts, I'm ready to test it and deploy it. Then step four, I will update and deploy the integration flow with another CI CD to call Azure Pipeline. So these are the main parts of the demo that I'll show today. So I'll switch to my demo. So as I mentioned before we jump into the demo, I'll just show you the Git repository. So as you can see over here, um, this is the repository for Flashpipe. Of course, these are all the content of it. And you can uh, see a little detail. So if you're interested, then you can actually browse to the documentation. And it provides uh, quite uh, hopefully extensive document to allow you to start quite easily. You can go to getting started. We can go to release notes to see what's uh, What's the latest? You can go to getting started where you will let you know what I mentioned, the full and light images, and then how you set authentication if you're using basic or OAuth, and then what's the usage of the uh, Unix script that we have, and then the different use cases. And you can also jump to the reference repository where I have um, different branches um, set up for different use cases and the different platforms that they are used, where then it, it is a good example for you to start off with before then to familiarize yourself with uh, how it works and then before using it in your own, your own developments. So I just go back. Um, so and the rest are just some further details. And of course, if any of you are interested to contribute after checking out Flashpipe and you have some ideas, you are always welcome to contribute. I really um, enjoy having contributions from the community. All right, so we'll start, go back to the demo. Uh, Log on to my um, <clears throat> CPI tenant, and I have already an existing existing 
uh, package for it. So over here, I'm going to start creating a new integration flow. I'm going to name it JSON transformation flow. And I'll start creating the flow. It's going to be quite a simple flow for just for demo purposes. Not overly complicated. Just provide it an address. And then in the flow, um, again, for simplicity purpose, it's just going to be a one step. The JSON transformation. And I'm going to use the default uh, Groovy script template and save it. So, as mentioned, I'm going to continue my development on my local ID, so I won't do any Groovy development here. Just going to save a version. And there we have, I just started creating just a very simple integration flow. Then what's going to happen next is I want to sync this to a Git repository. Uh, currently, um, there's no native capability provided by uh, the integration suite to do this. So, um, so I'll switch to GitHub. Uh, and I have an existing repository for this purpose, which I'll use Flashpipe to sync it to this repository. Um, before syncing, there are some steps that I configured prior to this. I'll just quickly show you. It's basically the access details to access my, um, my integration, my CPI tenant. So over here in secrets, I have set up the OAuth uh, client ID and client secret over here, which then will be used um, to access uh, from GitHub uh, action. It will be used to access the tenant. So I'm going to start by creating a GitHub action. So this part of the CICT capability in GitHub, setting up a new workflow. I'm just going to name it sync iFlow. And actually, I have a pre prepared uh, content for this. I just copy this and uh, slowly explain some major parts of it. So, this is the definition of the YAML definition for the workflow. Uh, workflow dispatch means this can be executed. Uh, on demand manually from the GitHub UI. So by providing certain details, we will see later. So like the package ID, where we're going to save the 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 um, content, which integration flows to include or exclude, and then the naming convention and also the commit message once uh, it syncs the details. Then in GitHub Actions, you have to share, uh, configure your pipeline steps. So it runs on Ubuntu, but um, mainly it will uh, pull this container of Docker Hub. And these are the details to access my integration, my CPI tenant. So I provide the tenant URL, the OAuth, uh, the de details, so the secrets are uh, confidential, so they won't appear here, but they are configured in the secrets section. So the steps that are executed is first, it checks out the GitHub repository. Then the next step, it runs this script, providing the um, environment variables that will come from the input I configured up here. 
and then at the end it will push the changes back to github so i commit this workflow so i have a workflow already here going back to actions now you can see they show me a workflow and this workflow is triggerable manually i click run workflow so it says okay provide me the details of what you want to sync so i'm going to sync the whole of this package which at the moment just have one integration flow so i'm going to provide this and where i'm going to store it relatively to the root reposit repository root i'll just store it in the same name i'm going to uh, skip this too because i will include everything and also not exclude anything uh, the handling, if there are any draft versions, this is how it's handled, it's skip by default. If you still want to add draft versions, you can add it, or if you want to stop the whole flow, then you can set error. Then you want to name your iFlow directories, you want to name it by the iFlow name or iFlow ID, so ID is default. And I can provide an initial commit message. So I can say initial sync of package. Yeah. So I run this. This gets refresh, and you can see now um, it is being queued on GitHub Actions, and it will start running. So all the different steps, first it's pull the image from Docker Hub. And then it starts connecting, always oh, runs pretty fast. So I will just show the logs to you. So you can see in this log is running this, this uh, script, the sync script. So it's checking for this package and then downloading the iflow that it finds in that package unzipping it adding it to git and at the end it push all the new files to the github repository which i can quickly go to code and i can see there's a new commit and five files and transformation flow. It's the manifest file, the parameters file, the iFlow uh, XML, and the template Ruby scripts. So these are all already in my Git repository. So the next step is I want to then bring this into my local environment to do the development. Before I do that, um, as part of my development, I plan to um, do some unit testing locally. I want to I want to take advantage of Maven. Uh, I, 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 you can use Gradle or um, any other built environment that you are familiar with. I, I, I particularly familiar with maven so that's what i'm going to use so i'm going to create um, the maven uh, pom file for that that will um, tell me how the project structure will be like so i'll sh just quickly show so this is just a pom file if you're familiar with it tells me uh, what's the name of my artifact what are the dependencies it's using and and how the build is done okay so i'm going to create one at the root level the root level is for the whole repository but i'm also going to create one at the um, iflow level so there's a child pom 
there's a parent POM and there's a child POM. Uh, and the child POM is really simple. It just inherits everything from the parent POM. So then we have a, a multi-module uh, repository, Maven repository. So with this, I have my Maven repository ready. I can now switch to IntelliJ IDEA and clone this from, from, uh, from GitHub uh, directly clone. So that's the cloning is done. Uh, I'm just going to quickly set up a few things because CPI currently is running on JDK 8. So I'm just going to make sure I use Java 8 as the SDK for it. And then you can see, so you have um, the repository with the POM files, and then you have a directory for the package, and then a directory for the iFlow, which then you can expand further. You can see the iFlow XML, and then the default script that we already have. So this is the one that I now want to develop before that, I don't really like that um, it's named script one. I don't have a chance to name this when I create the script from the UI. But currently, since I'm already on IntelliJ, I want to rename this to JSON Transformation. And I also want to make sure that in my iFlow XML, it finds the correct one so that it is linked properly. So I change the reference to script one to JSON transformation. Okay, close this back. So I'm going to replace this logic with a proper um, code which for, for the demo purpose, I've already prepared just going to uh, copy over and quickly um, explain um, the iFlow script, the Groovy script will at first do a passing um, of a JSON. So it expects an input JSON, it will pass it, and then it will use JSON Builder to build an output JSON. So the input JSON format, it will be different from the output JSON format. And this is the transformation logic that we have. And at the end, it will store it in the message body. So uh, quite a simple, simple transformation, JSON to JSON transformation. So as I mentioned, I want to be able to test this locally um, so that uh, whenever my, I make changes to my script, I can quickly run test locally before I even upload it to, um, to the tenant. So this part of my development workflow. So to be able to test this locally, I'm going to set uh, some uh, testing directories. So I'm going to create a test resources directory and a test GUI directory. Just going to refresh. <clears throat> so, so it knows that um, the test source test groovy is a, a test sources directory. And then I will place an input file here called input JSON. So I have an input file, which is uh, of JSON and the structure is, is an order with um, some header details, order number and date, and some items with um, material number, quantity, and whether it's valid or not. 
So this is the input JSON that will go through this transformation to create a different JSON. And I want to test this and you can write tests in um, a lot of different testing frameworks. Uh, I particularly use uh, Spock because I quite like that as well. So I'm going to create a new Groovy cast called JSON transformation spec. Spock unit tests are normally called specifications. So spec at the end. So again, I have already a prepared code. And over here, so um, it extends Spock specification. So first it will pass the the Groovy transfer the JSON transformation Groovy script and then it executes um, the process data method in it. And then at the end you will uh, get the output. It knows the output is JSON, it will pass it and then it will check some values in the <coughs> output to make sure that they are correct based on the transformation logic. So I have this already ready. Now I can actually run Maven test. It compiles the Groovy script and it also then compiles the test and it executes it. And you can see now um, it successful completed the test test run for JSON transformation one test case and is successful. So with this, I know, okay, this is um, the script that is working according to my, um, my, my definition and my specification. I'm now ready to bring it back into the iFlow. And here I will then commit this. So so I'm going to update updated script logic and edit unit test. I'm going to copy it and push it. And now I switch back to my GitHub repository. You can see it's now in the here. So you can see it's now in the GitHub repository. And then from then I want to bring it to the development, the, the CPI tenant. And this, I use a different platform just as a showcase of um, the different CI CD tools that's possible, you can do it all in the same CI CD tool. But over here, I'm going to show you now how it can be done in Azure DevOps. Um, there's a pipelines functionality. So Azure DevOps pipelines. Um, but before I create the pipeline, I just want to uh, show to you that um, again, same like in GitHub Actions, I pre-prepared the credentials to access the tenant in as secret variables so that then it's not all this um, sensitive information are not hard-coded in, in the configuration. So I go back here, pipelines, and now I create a pipeline and I need to select where the repository is from, is from GitHub. And flash by webinar. And it says, how do you want to configure like a pipeline? I'm just gonna start with a bare one, which I, again, I will, I've prepared the pipeline definition and we'll go through. So it says um, the trigger is on the main branch and it uses um, an Ubuntu image. Now it has access to the variables which I showed earlier. This is where it knows where it can get the secrets for accessing the tenant. Then it will use this container, 
flash pipe. And then these are the steps. So the first step is when the pipeline is run, it runs a local unit test to make sure that the, um, the scripts are working correctly. Once that's successful, it executes this Unix, uh, Unix script to upload the iFlow to design time. So these are the details, the credentials, and then uh, what's the iFlow ID, what's the iFlow name, where's the package. And then if the upload to design time is successful, it can do a deploy to run time. And the deployment script takes the environment variable, the iFlow ID. So this is ready, a save and run. So I'll have to save this pipeline as a commit. Okay, so you can see it start doing the build. Just wait a while while um, all this trying to get the resources. So now it's pulling flashback Docker image from Docker Hub. Then it checks out the GitHub repository. Now it executes Maven, compiles and then tests. After the test is successful, is checking if the iFlow is already available on the tenant. If it is, he downloads it, does a diff to compare, so and then uploads it. And then at the end, it does the deployment. So while it's waiting for the deployment, because typically the deployment um, takes a while on CPI, so I can switch to the tenant to show you. Let's refresh the tenant. So you can see it's bumped the version to the next version. And um, you can see also it's created by the auth. If I dive into the integration flow, I'm just hold on a while. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. So now you can see the script um, is no longer using a script one, but it's using JSON transformation script. And you can actually see the content of the script as what I've uh, done earlier. So, and you can see the deployment is starting. I can navigate to that. You can see it's just starting normally on new tick. This takes a while, but we can switch back here there is um, a check um, to on the iflow status so it checks up th every 30 seconds up to 10 times so we just wait a while and okay you can see okay now it's actually started on the tenant and it will reflect back on the job yep and now the job is completed. So on Azure DevOps, you can also see that, um, okay, the Maven test is also logged into the reporting that's available on Maven, uh, oh, sorry, on, on Azure. So you can see scenario one orders has one item, is passed. And as mentioned, is deployed to the tenant. Uh, I mean, it's uploaded to the rock design time and also deployed to the runtime. So that is the end of my demo. I hope you find that interesting and uh, we can actually
head into about uh, five to ten minutes of questions if there are any. Uh, yes, uh, we have some time to ask you questions. Uh, at first, uh, my question, uh, does uh, FlashPipe support uh, script collections or uh, usable uh, message mappings? Um, currently, it doesn't, and um, it's more because there are no APIs from SAP yet for script collection. So uh, currently, the only artifact it supports is um is the integration design artifact um uh, there are plans to um in um add uh, value mapping and also security credentials to it but um the first stage of the the solution is the core art, core artifact which is the integration flow so script collection um will come when sap delivers the the api for it okay that's clear uh, second question, um, suppose we have some externalized parameters uh, in CPI. Yes. Uh, and uh, is there any way to use uh, them for testing? Yes, so um, let me switch to the externalized parameters part. Uh, so when you have externalized parameters, it actually goes into uh, parameters prop file. This example doesn't have it. So let me switch to the examples repository that I mentioned earlier, with which I do have some examples here. So this one yeah, here. So this is here. So for example, this is <coughs> um, a different uh, iFlow and it has the externalized parameters called sender endpoint and target address. So, so these are the externalized parameters. It always goes into this parameters prop file. So what uh, you can do is um, you can change this and then when you do a deployment, then it will pick up the latest parameters prop and then it um, updates the configuration. If you do a deployment to multiple environments where typically you would have different target address or endpoints, then um, you can actually set up different parameter props value. Uh, my recommendation is to create in the same iFlow, direct, uh, iFlow directory, uh, like a QA, uh, folder which says this is the parameters prop for QA so you can see the endpoint is different and the target address is different and then when you define the the YAML file the YAML configuration <coughs> flash pipe supports uh, this other use case I, I can't show all use cases in the demo today so this is a different use case where instead of um, loading the parameters prop from the default location, I can say um, in depth, it loads from the default location, which is uh, source main resources parameters prop. But if it's when I run it in, let's see this, which step is this? This is QA. This is a QA step. So I provide it a different uh, parameters prop file. So when it deploys to a QA environment, it deploys the same design, but different externalized parameters. Okay, thank you. That's clear. Any questions? So, Aynat, у нас есть ли вопросы в чате? I think no questions. Okay, no problem. Uh, thank you, uh, NXV. Thank you very much. We will try your tool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to, to share today. And thank you for um, inviting me and allowing me to present today. So as I mentioned, this is a open uh, source uh, solution. So feel free to try it out, um, whether just 
for your own what or or you want to use it as a client feel free to do it and i hope uh, all of you will benefit for it thank you again for uh, the time today thank you